Is the LEGO Technic Space Shuttle set number 8480 the single most legendary set ever? Let's find out. This is one of the most legendary Technic sets ever, not only because it is the first one to have a function switching distribution gearbox, but it also comes with tons of electronics and play features. So in this review, we will cover the unboxing experience, the building process, the functions of the model, the aesthetics of the model, pros and cons, as well as three fun facts about space shuttles in real life, so make sure to stick around. Starting with the unboxing experience, the first thing that caught my attention is the level of quality the box has. When you open the box, you can see all of the pieces inside, like the battery box, the fiber optics unit, and much more. Now we need to peel off the top cover, and then you can see a nice organization tray, under which you will find the instructions, stickers, and a small advertisement of LEGO Technic. Being sealed for 25 years has caused humidity to affect the instructions, now some of the pages are stuck together and they make a very interesting sound. The electronics included in the set are awesome. First you get this fiber optics element unit, which essentially serves as a light brick. After connecting the thin plastic fibers to the unit, it would make staggering light effects. This will be used for the rocket engines. Next we have the electro plate, which transfers electricity through Lego bricks. I definitely think that we should get more pieces like this, since this could completely eliminate wires in system-based creations. We also have a 9 volt battery box a regular motor, a micro motor, as well as two switches. Personally, I greatly appreciate the use of an organization tray in this set, since it makes building in small spaces a lot easier. However, I'm definitely used to building simply from the desk without an organization tray. The building process for the set is quite complex. Some steps are either illogical or just difficult to follow. For example, when you're supposed to add the turntable structure, the system bricks conflict with the Technic axles. Ideally, the system bricks at the turntable should have been added only after the turntable structure was placed in the space shuttle, but then the turntable would prevent the system bricks from being placed, so it results in a difficult building process. Now I'm about halfway done building the space shuttle, and I just wanted to show you some of the most interesting mechanisms and building techniques used in this set. The wings connect using a combination of these two unique pieces, the one on the left only ever appeared in just three sets, including the space shuttle, making it quite rare. On the left wing, there is a lever to control the landing gear, this function will be covered in more detail when the set is completely built. Next, I wanted to show you the unique and compact arrangement of gears to control all the the functions. And on top of the gear arrangement, there will be a distribution gearbox with the four main functions. Now let's look at everything the legendary space shuttle has to offer. In order to control everything, we first must turn on the space shuttle, which requires you to take off some pieces, slide out the battery box, turn it on, and then put everything back together. Then, we need to engage the gearbox into the desired function, which for now will be the openable cargo bay. Then, by turning the knob at the right, the motor will start, and the cargo bay doors will open. I greatly appreciate how the set uses white axles on the cargo bay doors to keep a good aesthetics. Next, we can engage the gearbox into the crane lifting function, and then the crane will rise up. Then, by using the gearbox, we can turn the crane 90 degrees to the right in either direction. Then, by using the knob on the left side, we can start the micro motor, which will open the solar panels on the little satellite. The micro motor is extremely slow, but it still provides sufficient power for this function. If we engage the gearbox into the back right position, the axle of the fiber optics element will spin, resulting in astonishing lighting effects for the engines. I recommend being in a dark room when using the fiber optics, since the space shuttle looks much cooler that way. I just want to say, if you're enjoying this video so far, then make sure to subscribe so that way you can learn all about LEGO Technic, like the rarest gears, rarest motors, rarest Technic pieces, and so much more. The knowledge to the most interesting aspects of LEGO Technic is just one click away. But, no pressure, no pressure. It's important to note that 
Unlike the modern distribution gearbox sets, the motor here will turn off any time you stop using the function. Since the control knobs will always return to center due to the rubber bands turning off the 9V switches. On the right wing, you can see control lever, which is responsible for the elevons. Elevons essentially combine ailerons and elevators, so you can control both pitch and roll just using a single pair of control surfaces. On the left wing, you will see a control lever which is responsible for the landing gear function. Since the set does use a shock absorber for the landing gear, it feels very snappy and the landing gear always stays locked in place. Now comes the fun part. Let's talk about the aesthetics of the set. First of all, I greatly appreciate the front section, since it looks very detailed for the time by using a combination of Technic bricks and system pieces. I love that the crew compartment has two seats, so that way you can place some minifigures in there. And I really wish that some modern LEGO Technic sets would be compatible with either the Technic figures or regular minifigures. The studded look achieved with the Technic bricks is a staple of old Technic, and if you directly compare a set from the 90s to a modern Technic set, you can instantly tell just just how much the aesthetics have changed. With the space shuttle, the designers have clearly prioritized the functionality above all else. To me, this is what LEGO Technic is all about. I greatly appreciate good looks in a set, with paneling and such, but only one of the functionality is still preserved, like in the LEGO Technic 6x6 valve articulated hauler. The space shuttle has nice key features, and even though the modern sets definitely look a lot more detailed, I still greatly appreciate the aesthetic of the old Technic, since it has become iconic. One thing I don't like about this set is that a 9V wire sticks out. This is exactly how it's supposed to be according to the instructions, but with some quick modifications you can easily hide this wire, and I also did have to re-insulate it a little bit because it started falling apart. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the set. For the pros, the set is considered legendary, it is the first one ever to use a basic function switching gearbox, and it also comes with plenty of play features, just so much cool stuff about the set, so many cool building techniques. The set has revolutionary mechanisms that are still used to this day. The set also comes with a phenomenal selection of electronics. You get a regular motor, an anvil battery box, a micro motor, an electro plate, two switches, and more. It was an amazing set back in the day if you wanted to get started with 9V electronics. The set also has the iconic studded look. The studded look of LEGO Technic has really been lost to time, and in some of the older fans of LEGO Technic, this set is gonna trigger nostalgia. But what about the cons of the space shuttle? Well, for one, you have a wire sticking out in the right hand side. I think it could have been easily hidden away in the space shuttle itself, so I'm definitely gonna be modifying the set a little bit. Another con of the set is that Due to the age, the wires get extremely easily destroyed. For the long wires, I initially ordered new ones on Bricklink, they got delayed, and so I just had to re-insulate my current cables. Also, the instructions are quite difficult to follow, with some steps being illogical. And here are three fun facts about space shuttles in real life. Number one, the orbiter goes around the Earth at about 17,500 miles per hour. Number two, the only pressurized part is the front cabin, so even though the orbiter seems giant, the astronauts can only be in the front cabin without their spacesuits. And number three, there were six total space shuttles built, but only five of them ever flew in space. Enterprise was used as a test vehicle and stayed on Earth. This review is actually my 10,000 subscribers special, so thank you very much. Without your support, this amazing milestone would not have been possible. I greatly appreciate every single one of my subscribers, so thank you very much. The set was actually chosen in a poll about a month ago, so if you want to decide some of my future content, then make sure to subscribe and vote on the community tab posts. If you enjoyed my review of a legendary LEGO Technic set, then click on the video right over here, which is another legendary set. This is your Unbrick Me here, and I'll see you in the next one.